so much atul for joining us and you know since the morning we're talking about trends we're talking about clients uh, biggest uh, part of the conversation is i guess where the money is coming from right and how to keep the pot boiling um, so uh, you know uh, i was also reading up a lot about rainmaker your organization and uh, i think what your belief has been it is not just the brands with the uh, that has a bigger name etc that should be backed it's also the independent entrepreneurs founders who should be equally backed and they deserve all the help that they do right so but again the trend is in the capital uh, raising space landscape it's often seen that uh, bigger brands they get the most favor right so what are the specific strategies that work for independent founders entrepreneurs that would make them stand out and that would make raising funds for them easier sure can you hear me i can uh Yeah, I think this is better. So before we start off, I think uh, first a big thank you for the E4M group to actually putting the spotlight on independent digital agencies. I think all of them deserve a lot more attention for what they have been doing. And it's just not now, right? Last 15 years, I think a lot of innovations has come from this sect of agencies. And I'm glad that finally there's a forum. There are so many people attending. Uh, and it's apt that somebody like E4M has invested in it. I hope this continues uh, for a long time. So yes, so thank you for that. Coming to your uh, question, I think uh, there are lots of avenues uh, for independent agencies to look uh, at raising capital. I also meet a lot of founders, and I think the biggest pain point that independent agencies have is cash flow. Uh, right, it's not about winning accounts. It's not about going and you know working with large multinationals. It's really the cash flow that really bothers them, and that's a big distraction when you're running a business. And mind you, these are some of our best talent. Uh, right, if you take away this one big teasing problem from their business, there's so much that they can do. Right. So, for example, when we look at investing uh, in companies in this uh, sector, like in other sectors. The primary is, of course, the pedigree of the team, uh, right? Uh, and in most cases, you know, if somebody has decided to become an entrepreneur, has jumped into this category, and this is cutthroat, right? And I'm sure there are thousands of independent digital agencies of all sizes. So somewhere, for someone to get into this category, they've already, you know, half the battle is won, that they have taken that uh, step. So for us, pedigree is extremely important. Uh, team profile, what have they done? After that comes all the other usual factors. What is duty? Do they have some, you know, charter clients that will actually back them for a long time? What is the kind of work they've done? But primarily it boils down to talent, okay, the quality of people, and it all boils around the founders when they're raising uh, money, especially in a business like this where it's all about the human capital. Uh, right, it's all about the people who come together, how they gel as a team, what is the kind of output they have. So that's primary for us uh, when we are looking at that. Uh, and then over a period of time, and I've been we've been doing this for almost now eight years. We've invested in uh, you know independent agencies across not only in India but even Southeast Asia and the Middle East. And we've always seen that in more cases than not, if you back the right founder, uh, you give them space to do what they do well. Uh, right and take care of this entire cash flow situation that 90% of them get stuck uh, in and sometimes it's just about not even about putting a certain amount of capital it's just about guiding them on what are the things that they need to do uh, right so for, that's really helped us uh, so yes so a great founder would be the main reason for us to go after and invest in that company. It's not about how they will scale up. It's not about what is unique about them. Because in a services category, very dif difficult to differentiate and say that this is unique. Your uniqueness lasts every campaign that you do. Uh, right? Uh, the team here before spoke about uh, you know how brands wait for that one big viral uh, thing. And so do with agencies. Right? Some campaigns succeed, some don't. But ultimately, it's about that set of people who are you know starting off that company. Perfect. You know, for all the independent founders here, I think this is also insight that would prepare them for Shark Tank. You gave them all the <laughs> secrets to 
uh, win there. And you know, we were having a chat before this session started and you mentioned that venture capital is not the last door to knock, right? It's not your only option. So what are the other avenues that are open for independent agencies to explore when sure. it comes to funding? So if you actually look at the independent digital agency landscape in India, right? And I said there might be thousands of them. But if you start categorizing them in terms of their size, in terms of turnover, so in the one to 10 crores, you know, you would find 50% of them, which is the majority of where it is. Then 10 to 20, you'll find another chunk. And as you keep like, like 100 plus, you'll find a very few, 200 plus, still fewer, 300 plus, I think it will be, you'll be able to count them on your fingertips, right? So it's really that when you are in that stage, when you're in that one to 20, zero to 20 crores kind of a turnover range, you have multiple options, right? And a lot of it comes from just being aware. Like, you know, while it, we all get up in the morning, we read Economic Times and we read so-and-so raised money at so valuation. I mean, it all sounds so good. But the fact is that there is many more avenues other than venture capital, right? For example, the most boring but a sure shot way of getting funding is your bank, right? Which most of us don't want to get hassled at it because we know that we're going to be thrown with thousands of questions from their side. But the fact is that if you build a great relationship with your existing banker, there are lots of avenues for you to raise debt. There's a lot of, lots of op options for you to look at a smaller term loan. And they exist. These are not some fairy tales where it happens one in thousands or, you know. It's really about going and figuring out what it is. I'll give you other examples. If you're a woman entrepreneur, for example, there are lots of central and state schemes where today a woman entrepreneur can raise capital up to two crores without any collateral, right? And these are again not fairy tales. These are things which is reality. It needs a little bit of research. It needs you to spend some time to go and visit, uh, <coughs> you know, the institutions who are offering this. And in three to five months time, you will be able to raise capital without collateral. Uh, right? Similarly, you know, register yourself as an MSME. Again, there are benefits for that, right? Being an MSME registered company protects you against certain credit period from clients, right? Which is the biggest problem, again, for small agencies where clients sometimes take you for granted. You know, they'll tell you they'll pay you for 30 days and they're not paying you for three, four, five, six months. Today, there's a laws that protect uh, companies, smaller companies, where if you are a registered MSME company, you have to get paid by a certain time. Similarly, there are loan schemes from MSME, right, where you can actually go and secure various kinds of loans. There are grants available with every state government, depending on where your company has been registered. Now, all of these might sound like, oh, no, it's so sarkari. But the fact is they work, and they have been dispersing. One prime example was during COVID, time where every small enterprise could actually go to your own bank and you could raise up to 50 lakhs without any collateral for five years interest free, right? Now, I don't know how many independent agencies actually took advantage of that, uh, right? I know even though our companies uh, were pretty well placed, they went and took advantage of this because it is a, something that as an incentive that was given to small companies. So one is to have somebody in your team, you know, who will either spend time understanding these schemes uh, you know, not running after that big venture capital because you read it in the morning in, uh, in a newspaper. You know, that's not the only avenue, right? Uh, second is HNIs. There are a lot of HNIs who are today looking to invest in this sector, uh, right? I mean, today no, no brand can live without digital marketing, which means the category is growing. It's the fastest growing category. There are a lot of HNIs who are interested in the media advertising sector who are looking for opportunities who are not looking to cut big checks, but they're big enough for the companies the size that I spoke about. As you get bigger, of course, you know, a lot of avenues will open up. There's debt raising opportunities for you. As you cross that 20, 30 crore uh, turnover threshold, there's a lot more avenues uh, for you, uh, right? And also look out for people who are investing. There are, I agree that there are very few funds that invest in this sector. Ad tech at one point of time used to be a hot uh, category, no more. But look out for fund houses that put money into these uh, sectors. They are again a low hanging fruit for you to go and approach them. I, I made mental notes of as many as I could. So if I open a venture, I have 
some options to fall back on. Uh, but you know, um, for a lot of companies that you mentioned, you mentioned brackets, what will uh, make you access certain uh, options that are open. So that is where I think the P uh, conversation about scaling comes. When it comes to scaling, a lot of uh, independent uh, entrepreneurs, they uh, suffer a bit, right? So when it comes to scaling, what should these independent founders, agencies do so that they are more attractive to people who are ready to invest in them? I think that's a great question. And here again, I think the answer lies in look at what the networks did, right? I mean, most of the large networks have been around for more than 100 years. They have scaled up on companies coming together. You know, I used to be part of a network called Hawass uh, many, many decades back. And they acquired some 200, 250 small independent agencies, right? Today, there are international networks that do that. So if smart entrepreneurs in this space actually decide to come together and say that, hey, you know, on my own, I'm X, but X plus Y is going to be much larger, right? And today is the era of collaboration, right? We see it all around. We see it uh, in companies, we see it across, I mean, any brand you look at, any category you look at, you hear about collabs, right? So look for collaborations, you know, look for other digital agencies that are also at the same boat as you, might be a little bigger, might be a little smaller, have something unique, have a different geo or have a different set of clients. See how you can collaborate with them, right? Coming together is really the strength for this community, right? Whether it is a business need, whether it is going after a client with different services, which makes you guys complementary to that client. But I think that's how you will be able to scale up much faster, much more efficient. And once you do that, you get two, three great companies coming together, you know, clubbing their services, you know, growing their portfolio of services from two to five to 10. That's when you will start getting playing, you know, you start playing much larger, you will attract much larger client base. And with that, you know, it's much easier for you to approach, uh, you know, funds like us, which look into this category. So that's one great way, uh, you know, for, to collaborate. It's also a great way to fight against the big boys when you are up against a big pitch, uh, right? Uh, the other thing you should remember is that the Indian government is the single largest spender on digital. It's bigger than any Unilevers of the world. It's the single largest spender, right? <clears throat> they had took one decision about five years back that they are ready to work with startups in this space. So this is one of those few government tender categories where it's not about price, where it's not about, you know, they want to work with the best. They, in most cases, in 70% of the cases, even if you are somebody who's two years old, three years old, under five crores of turnover, you will be able to participate in this. Here, if you collaborate with other agencies come together, they allow consortiums in most cases. Again, they want talent like this, you know, it's just that you know, most of it happens out of Delhi. So, you know, we feel that, okay, maybe it's not for us. It's only for one set of guys. No, it's open. They want to work with newer, agile, smaller agencies. And again, that's a great opportunity. So coming together, putting your strengths together just makes you punch much, much, much heavier than your weight. Right. Uh, is there a, is that the other side of the coin when it comes to collaborations? Uh, we also automatically think of consolidations that is happening, right? Bigger agencies, like you mentioned, they're working together, sometimes acquiring, merging, whatever the format is. So in a situation like that, uh, in a landscape where there is a lot of consolidation also happening, uh, what are your two cents for uh, independent agencies, how to uh, have their individuality intact and also retain their autonomy? alongside partnering and working together with the bigger agencies? Yeah, I think it's the best time to be an independent agency, especially because of this consolidation. If you look at the landscape, right, about maybe seven, eight, ten years back, most of the networks came and they acquired the early starters in the digital agency space, right? And 90% of those agencies, they killed by acquiring, right? Uh, typically, network agencies come to acquire you for what you are. The moment they acquire you, they want you to become of what they are. And that's a recipe for disaster. Now what has happened is a lot of independent agencies have gained scale. Some of them, you know, you know, I saw some of the names attending here and they've really scaled up in the last six, seven, eight years. They are now looking to acquire smaller independent agencies, right? So this consolidation is no longer a domain of only the networks, 
right? Independent agencies are out there hungry, looking for smart, upcoming independent digital agencies to either acquire, to collaborate, take a minority stake. Now, ultimately, it really depends on the equation of the founders, okay? A, who's acquiring and who's getting acquired. It's their equation that's really going to you know, lead the path of how this relationship will actually go on, right? How much control they'll keep, what is the understanding between them. But trust me, in the business that we are in and the way technology is a key ally in this category, right? It's no longer about control in the traditional sense. It's no longer saying that, okay, if I control 51%, I control this company. Today, investors are mature enough to understand that you have to let the entrepreneur bloom. Right? They have to do what they're good at. So control today is not about controlling the company, but it is control in terms of how well can you go into the market, how can you create better uh, products for your clients, how can you create better campaigns. So consolidation in my mind is actually a great time and a great opportunity for smaller independent agencies. Perfect. And you know, uh, since we're talking about uh, smaller independent agencies and the advantages they have, uh, one other question comes to my mind when we speak to a lot of traditional brands, they have a certain uh, set pattern that they sometimes do not want to come out of, right? And this is where independent agencies have an edge in terms of innovation or agility, right? So trying to understand from you, is this actually an edge that they can encash on, that they can really uh, promote as this is one of the advantages we have? No, no, absolutely, and big brands have woken up to it, right? Look at uh, BFSI. Right, the traditional banks got disrupted by the fintech world. Right, look at FMCGs. I mean, they never expected D2C to be such a force. Right, all of them have gone and acquired D2C uh, brands. All of the large banks today are looking to acquire fintechs, early stage startups, or getting that technology. They have now understood that if they really want to differentiate, and you know, when I meet uh, CMOs, this is one common thing. They are looking to work with the next guy on the street, with the next kid on the street who's creating that disruption. So that no longer is a barrier. You know, when I first started digital agency 20 years back, it was a huge barrier saying go and do advertising, you know, on digital. Today it's not. Today the biggest of them, and I'm sure if you look at the top 30, 40 independent agencies, they all work with the biggest brands. So that is no longer a barrier. The barrier in my, in what I have seen is in the entrepreneur's mind, right? Where we ourselves put that thing saying that, oh, this client seems to be too big for us. We are just a 10 member team. That's not the case in terms of with the large brands. They want to meet you guys. They want to understand what's uh, new. So just do not hesitate. The power of a cold call, the power of just showing up at somebody's door is so greatly underestimated. You know, we just get lost in the noise and we forget how valuable we are and what we can do for that brand. So to answer your question, I, I don't see that as a barrier at all. Today, brands are much more open. Of course, there might be some brands which will still have a way of it, but it's just a matter of time. And we've seen every sector, uh, you know, across has been disrupted by startups. And this sector is no different. And uh, talking of the future also, for the, about the days to come. For a very long time now, we've been talking about the funding winter. So A, is that finally coming to an end? Are we uh, heading towards a time when this funding winter is coming to an end? Second is, what is the role of private equity firms, venture capitalists, when it comes to the next mile growth that these independent agencies are going to see? And how do they stand out to it? Uh, make themselves more attractive. So there's no funding winter in India, right? Globally, you look at it, this is the only place where all the big boys want to invest, right? There's no other market that's going to give them this kind of long-term returns, which is there. So that is really, really not hit us at all. But most importantly, in the services category, right? Especially in the B2B services category, it's not a burn business. You do not need crores and crores and crores of capital to burn to create a great digital independent agency. And that's an advantage. There are lots of funds today who value the fact that however small you are, you are generating cash. You know, you're building a sustainable business. You, it's not a business where you want to go and get 1 million consumers tomorrow, right? You can have a set of 20, 25 uh, clients and that's great. So that way again, I see no dearth of money, which is organized money from a venture cap uh, point of view into certain categories of this. But just the fact that there are so many angels, there are so many larger independent agencies who want to acquire today, 
itself is a great opportunity. The other thing you should not forget is Indian capital markets today are much more easy to tap. We've all seen the boom that is happening in the SME uh, markets, you know, NLC emerge. So today, an uh, independent company, you know, three years profit making, has a track record, can actually go and tap the retail investor. We've seen how our markets are booming. And these are not pipe dreams. We have lots and lots of agencies in this category in the last 12 months that have gone public, including some of ours. So, you know, so it's not something that we heard about saying that, oh my God, doing an IPO is like a dream. No, today in India it's possible. So it's just about getting that knowledge. It's just having more conversations like this. I mean, if you guys as a platform decide to have even four such conversations in a year, you'll have 100 more companies in this sector getting listed in the next three years. Our events team is listening, I hope. Uh, before uh, we open the floor to the audience, one last question, uh, slightly uh, more personal, is, uh, you know, as an expert, what are the kind of agencies, what are the categories, if I may say, that you are personally backing and you see that, you know, these are the kind of agencies uh, that will bring in the next uh, mile growth in the landscape right now? So, the first thing that we back is really very basic any agency that is doing good creative work, right? Creative work is underrated. We are so enamored by saying, this is the latest ad tech piece in the market. End of the day, it's about brand storytelling. Even the uh, panel before this, which was talking about influencer marketing and tech and all of that. Ultimately, it comes down to that piece of creative. That as a consumer is what we really, really enjoy and that's what we remember of a brand. So any good agencies out there who really, really understand you know, the brand, you know, gets great creative product out will always be in demand. After that, of course, you know, influencer marketing is a great emerging category. Can you create some niches around that? You know, everybody's talking about AI. We'll have to really see how it is actually applicable, you know. So AI in production, for example, there are lots of, uh, you know, a lot of companies that are working in that place. AI in marketing analytics, we have invested in a couple which work with large FMCG groups to really do deep end sales. Uh, analytics using AI, uh, media companies, right? Digital media companies uh, from programmatic. We had a launch here today morning uh, uh, onwards. Again, there's lots of opportunities in that. But the entire spectrum, because we are just getting started, uh, right? And it's still, I mean, there's a few, one of the few markets in the world where digital is still like a 20, 22% annual growth, which is unheard of across any medium, any market. And this is not a, you know, one year phenomenon. This is going to continue. So across the spectrums, but age old, if you are an agency that does great creative work, you will never go out of style. Right. Uh, we'll open the floor to the audience. Any questions for Atul while we can take more offline and he mentioned that cold call is still in, so we can still do that. But still, uh, any questions for Atul, we'd be happy to take some. 